All right, so now I'm going to continue building my ball diff. So luckily for me, my local hobby shop, Gold Coast RC, had the little uh, spring that I uh, seem to have lost. Uh, where I lost it, I don't know. I do recall something getting attached to a magnetic screwdriver and hearing it drop. And uh, later on, I found a screw on the ground, so I just assumed it was that, but I searched everywhere, I couldn't find it. So I have a new spring. And also, when I was pulling the diff apart, I noticed that there was like a little part that was broken. Um, and so I thought I took the opportunity to get a spare one of those. So it's a spare diff gear. So I've got all the parts I need. Let's build it together. Diff lube. So I sort of kept it all nice and sealed just to try and keep it clean. So I've got my diff here. Feels nice. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get... I've got the instructions here, so I strongly recommend using the instructions. Um, or use Jared Tebow's video. So I've used Jared Tebow's video a couple of times to do this. Um, so I think what we want to do is we want to put the spring in. And first you should use a pair of pliers because it's new, just to sort of spring it, just to remind it that it's a spring. Uh, check which side you're going to put it down. And so we go spring in. And we open up this part. And this is the part that catches the nuts. Be careful using these hobby knives. Hopefully I don't cut myself. All right, and so we've got the little bolt. So here's the new one, and there's the old one. Don't know if you can see that. I know you won't see it on that one. Um, so it's just missing the lugs on the side that sort of hold it in. So we're going just to gently put the nut in. All right, and slot that just down the slack. Just push it down. Let's use a hobby knife just to push it down. Almost all the way down. Probably best to use a hex drive. All right, so I think that's pretty much sorted. Now what we want to do is we have the thrust bearing. So we need to put the thrust bearing onto here. So we'll just give it a clean. I might be one second I'm just gonna go get my uh, spray just to clean this stuff all right so I got my spray um, so I'm gonna pull out these things here which I'm just gonna very carefully just tip so I can tip them into this corner so this is the be fast thrust bearing. Uh, sure. Be careful not to lose one of these. So we'll just make sure that we got the eight of these in. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I've got the eight of those there. I've got these guys. Which we'll just give a little spray. Give them a bit of a clean. Don't want them blown away. Okay, so what we want to do is put one of the thrust washers down here and we want to fill it full of grease. So that's what this black grease is for. So you use the clear grease for the diff and you use the black grease for this. Uh, the reason is, is different levels of friction, I believe. Okay, now it's just a matter of use a little bit of grease on your hand just to pick it up. Come on, over here. And you just carefully place each dip ball together. So this one's a little bit harder because there's nothing to sort of hold it all in. You just gotta put it in yourself and kind of make your own bearing. A little bit more light. It's a matter of squashing one in to make it fit. Um, so I'm just going to check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just to make sure that they're all there. And then what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of um, grease onto here, a little bit more grease. Lots of grease. We're just going to try and sort of very gently just coat it around and then hopefully the washer will sort of push it all down. And then kind of just So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of just smooth it all off so that when it goes down, it all stays together. So I'm pretty sure there's plenty of grease in there. So I'll just clean my hands up. And so I believe we're ready to put it down here. So we just want to very gently slide it down. Red handled screwdriver. 
just gently push it down. Right. So we've got bolt, thrust washer, ball bearings, thrust washer down the right side. So you just got to make sure that they're aligned. So the diff has a hole in it. And that hole is designed for something like this to go down so you can easily adjust your diff. Um, so check your instructions. Refer to the Jared Tebow video. Um, it's quite a good video. So uh, I think that's everything. So in theory, we should be able to I think we have contact. Yep, we got contact. Okay. So what we're going to do is just clean some of the grease out. So it says in the manual to get two sort of like screwdrivers, stick them in the out drives, and uh, so it doesn't feel too bad. Kind of does feel a little bit gritty though. I'm sure I remember the other time I did this, it was smoother. pretty normal in there. Yeah, it looks fine. <coughs> what I'll do is I'll just chuck a little bit more of the clear grease. Jared Tebow says, can never have too much grease in here, so can't hurt just to sort of, you know, be really sure that everything's in there nice and good, so it feels quite good. There's definitely plenty of grease in there this time. So we will put you in. Put you in. Feels nice and smooth now. 
lots of grease coming out now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of get it tight and um, use a drill to sort of wear it in. Clean up. All right, so I've got the BeFast break-in procedure. So I think before we break it in, we need to make sure that it's more accurately, going, no, this will go in. Right, so it says here, and rotate. You just sort of so it says to secure them. Until it becomes tight. So adjusting the diff is not my speciality. I'm still quite new at this, so Adjust it like just a, a fraction of a turn each time, and I think I just want it to be nice and tight. So I think in the past I've run it too loose and I've damaged it, but I'm not really sure. feels a bit tighter now. It's hard to know, you know, when it's too tight, but it says that if they don't rotate in opposite directions when you spin one, then it's too tight. So tighter now so basically you never want your diff to slip just one little sort of slip it makes like a burp type sound All right, so that feels quite good so what we're going to do is we are going to try and do the be fast break-in procedure Where we
it says to spin it one way 20 seconds, spin it the other way 20 seconds, and then do it up a sixteenth of a turn, which is sort of like a quarter of a quarter. So I think it still feels quite good. Does feel pretty smooth. Right, so I'll chuck it in again. Feels looser now, that's for sure. So we'll do it up again. All right, so it feels quite solid. So we've got a bit more grease come out. Alright. One rebuilt diff. So <clears throat> I'm still going to have to be very, very cautious on, on um, uh, adjusting it once it's back in the car. Uh, but hopefully it, it feels like it's going to be pretty sort of solid. So now it's just a matter of putting the gearbox back together. And um, getting the car running again. Really looking forward to getting it running. So... Uh, give me a little while and I'll um, set this up to um, yeah, get it running again, start putting it all back together.
So now I want to get the gearbox back together. So I've pretty much got it all clean here. So I'll keep the instructions open. Okay, so now we're ready to put the gearbox back together. So I've got all the bits and pieces. Uh, always refer to the manual. So I'm just going to drop a ball bearing down here and put this part in. So you need to sort of press this together. I think first I should press this down a little bit. There we go. And we will press that down. And then we use a 18 mil screw. Um, goes through the gearbox and so I think last time what I did is I used a little bit of Loctite to sort of hold it all in just as a extra precaution Guessing that is going to go over here. Right, so that looks about right. So it doesn't say to use Loctite, but I kind of figured that it can't hurt. Just a fraction of a bit of Loctite. So I'm using a little bit of uh, Team Lossy stuff here. Don't do it up too tight, sort of like hand tight with an extra sort of quarter turn is generally what I'm going to go for. And our whole, like rely on the Loctite to sort of hold it all down. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is put the big bearings in. So these guys have had a little bit of silicon grease onto them. So I've already cleaned these guys up a little bit. They weren't that dirty. Drop another ball bearing in. And so then we want to put another ball bearing into here. Just want to make sure everything's nice and clean. So I already cleaned these and put them into a sealed bag so they would stay nice and clean. And then we want plastic. So we want uh, metal, plastic, metal, plastic. And I'm going to put this guy in just like that. And then, so we've got bearing, bearing. We want to put the side of this through that has the left hand side down. Oh. 
left and right. So you've got right hand side is the screw, left hand side is the bolt, and so it should go through like that. Just want to give it one last clean. There was a few little fibers on there before. <coughs> Alright, just want to give it one last clean. Before she goes on. Left hand side, left hand side is the bolt. So that's what you want to sort of hear, everything sort of flowing nicely. And then what we want is this top shaft to go down into the bearing. And then we want to put some grease in there before we put this in. So everything looks pretty good. So now it's just a matter of getting a little bit of grease in there. So what we're going to do is just put let's give this one more clean. I'm just getting any little fibers off. <sighs> Making sure it's nice and clean. Feels nice and smooth. And so left hand side is the bolt. Left hand side is this side. Okay. And we'll put some grease on there. So I'm just going to apply just a little bit of grease. Perhaps I'll take the cap off. Just in a few little places. Because it will go through the gears. So bolt down left hand side. And I'll just put a little bit on here. And so now we're just going to turn it around a little bit and let it sort of coat through. So there's a nice thin layer of grease over there. So I think that that's all it's going to need, just a little bit of grease. I don't want to put too much in there. But I might just put just a little bit more, just to be sure, just a little bit more. So 
I'm just going to try and go around the edge a little bit and just sort of take away just any excess. Right. So I feel pretty happy about how it all feels. And then we just drop it in. So we got bearing, 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 bearing. <coughs> bearing. Feels nice and smooth in there, so that's exactly what you want. Um, there's a little bit of play in it, but that was the same as last time. All right, so what we do now is, I believe, we screw in a 10 mil one of these. So it's 10 mil. So the Koyosho um, manual. Some people don't think it's the best, um, but they have like one-to-one -one scale on a number of their stuff, which does make it handy. All right, so now we go into the big screws. Yeah, it's going to use this. So again, I don't want to do these up too tight, and I'm not going to use any Loctite on these ones. probably go through by hand and just have a, a nice feel on how tight they are. Because I really don't want to pull this gearbox apart again for any other reason. So I believe this is my third time with this gearbox. Um, not of any fault of any real mechanical problems, but I think it's mostly just me and me learning. So with this one, it says not for the screw to come through too far on the other side. So um, maybe half a mil coming through. Just so it's sort of semi-firm. That one's really firm. So yeah, these ones are definitely not tight. They're just sort of more firm. And again, it's always good just to double check everything. So I'm not sure whether it was spinning more freely before or not. So we'll just loosen these off. And So I just loose them off a fraction, so they're just barely touching through, which I think is what it says. Make sure that the screw does not stick out of the plate. So just loosen them just a fraction more. It's like a quarter turn. Maybe not. And mine are just, just touching out. I'm pretty happy with the way that the gearbox feels right now, so I'm pretty confident to put it all back together. Chuck it in. All right. Rock and roll. Right, so to just tidy up a little bit. Now I believe there's a part in here. that 
just it over. Always cut away from yourself. So this little part here goes over where the screw is. Just to sort of cover it up, I think, just to sort of stop dust from coming in. And there was another part in here, I think there's a circlip. I think there's a talk of a circlip going on. Here it is. So you've got to cut it out. So it says in the instructions that you just sort of cut a V. So I'm going to use the one-to-one -one and just cut it on the And so I believe we just stick the circlip over. That's it. So I've got the... Come on, focus. Come on. I don't know if you can see that very well. Loosen off this. So you gotta loosen the rear the rear shock tower so that it has enough space that you can sort of lift it up. Lift it up and pop the gearbox in. And then it is a matter of putting in some 10 mil screws into the bottom of it. So I'm kind of doing it a little bit loose to start with. I don't want to do it all the way up. I just want to keep a little bit of movement into it. <clears throat> just to get the other screws in there first. Because it's really only held in by four screws. All right, so next what I want to do is I, I need to secure, I believe that's in the instructions. Um, I'm sure it was in there somewhere where you gotta secure the bottom screws. You raise the shock stay as inserted. Yeah, I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but basically this is loose. So I want to do this up, but to do this up, I actually want to put some Loctite because I have a um, an aluminium 
rear um, hub holder thingy. I want to put a little Loctite in there. I'm just going to do one screw up tight, remove the other one. And just put just a little bit, just a little bit of leftover stuff, or maybe just a fraction, just a little bit of Loctite. And that should do it, so not too tight. Now I'll move the other one. So I've already cleaned these screws up ready to for this point, so you know there's all old Loctite crap on there. So I just want to put just a little bit on there. <laughs> Mm. All right, so that that part's done. So now my rear hub is in. All right, so then it talks about putting on. So it just says do up those two screws at the bottom, two screws, and then we use <coughs> these ones here to do up this part. So, so it says eight mil screws, so I've got some eight mil screws, and we will do up this one. So this should be the last major one yeah. So what I'll do <coughs> is I'll just do up these screws here, just to sort of hold it in place. And then we can do up the other ones. One more. Alright, so once. So now that those ones are done, I'm, I'm keen to sort of do up the last of the gearbox screws. So that should be all of the bottom screw, so I can put the sticky protector plate back down. And then I can do these screws. Didn't feel sound too good. All right, so now that should be the gearbox in there. All right, so it all uh, feels quite good. Now, what was next? Uh, mid motor. 
So it talks about doing the rear hubs. Um, but I was wanting to put the <coughs> gearbox back together. I'm missing a tray at the Ooh, I'm up to the last, uh, the first tray of parts. That means I'm getting close to finishing. Just tidy up some of the stuff. Okay. So I've got a new bumper to go on. And I'm sure I have a new part of this to go on as well. So... So this part is going to go like yay, like yay, something like that, I'm guessing. And so there's two 15mm screws, it must be over here. Which might be in the part that I threw away. So I found the parts that I was looking for. And again, these ones here are gonna screw into metal. So these ones here are a bit dirty. So we wanna sort of clean them up a little bit. Actually really dirty. So what we're gonna do is just spray a little bit of cleaner in here, hold it in there, and just use the machine just to clean it. One more. And one more. Alright, so it's better. <coughs> So give it a good clean, and we are just going to chuck a little bit more Loctite onto these, again because they're going into aluminium. A little bit on, just a little bit. And so this is another part of the gearbox mounting. So you've got two screws on the bottom, two screws here and two screws here. Um, so it's quite important that there's like a shim in there and there's reports of uh, damaged idler gears in these gearboxes. Alright, that's that. 
And so um, there's like one shim in here. And I feel it's important to get the um, <coughs> the gearbox the right height level. So I think I put like a half mil shim in there. Can't quite remember. Um, all right, so I'll pull these screws out. So I have basically a brand new rear end. All oh, this is brand new. The arms are brand new. I'll put new bearings in here and re-greased everything and pulled all of these parts out. Um, rebuilt diff, all new fresh uh, grease in there. Um, so I'm pretty happy about all of that. And so now we have... Put a little bit of grease on the dog bones. So I'm just using some uh, leftover MIP grease from the MIP diff that I just pulled out. Um, so I'm not a real big fan of their stuff. Not, not that the reason I replaced this diff was their fault. It was my fault. Um, but. They don't actually have a proper part for this truck and it's sort of like a... Okay, it's that one. Now what I want to do is put... So again, I'm using some, I've got the aluminium hubs and I think that's where they were. Um, So I'm just going to use a little bit more the Loctite on these. I've got the titanium ones for titanium ball studs. Mainly because it makes pulling them out so much faster. So I've got the titanium ball studs with the hex driver in them. And I'm using aluminium washers underneath because... Um, what might happen is if you use the plastic washers under the ball studs, um, the ball studs, are, the Kyosho ball studs are known to break off. And so if you use aluminium underneath them, it helps. But if you use the titanium and the aluminium ball stud, I'm hoping it will help more. <coughs> All right, so we'll chuck some grease on this dog bone. I don't use much, just a little bit, just give it a bit of a coating. If you put too much grease in there, it'll just attract dirt and dust and crap. Alright, so I put my aluminium washer on the ball stud. Put the ball stud where I've got it set to. I always like to keep cleaning the head because it just pulls out gunk and grease and dirt. put a little bit of Loctite on here. Not too much. Alright. 
Alright, everything feels pretty good. Now what I need to do is get the um, slipper on there, which is <clears throat> another situation that I've got as I've got some new slipper pads. So I'm going to try and put that together now. Um, so these aren't the standard Kyosho ones, so I'm going to switch off, I'm going to put it all back together and uh, fingers crossed. So this is sort of like the end of my maintenance. So the whole purpose was to put a new diff in there because the out drives were damaged. So <clears throat> I've replaced bearings, re-greased everything, re-greased everything. I had some new parts here, so I put those in, cleaned everything, uh, new grease in the gearbox. And it all feels really good, so I'm hoping this is going to last me quite a while before I need to do any major maintenance on the rear end. So um, I'll try and follow it up with a little bit of track time um, and hopefully a race. And hopefully I don't come last. Thanks.